In this demonstration, we're going to have a look at how we can configure claim rules. In a single organisation, Active Direct Federation Service Deployment, it may be quite simple for us to design and implement these claim rules. Remember, claim rule is just proving information. So in many cases, we might need to provide only the user or group name that Direct Federation Services collects for the claim and then present that to our web server. However, in a business-to-business -business scenario, it's more than likely that we're going to have to configure more complicated claims rules to define user access between widely different systems. And if you think about the amount of information that we can specify with an active directory attributes, this can provide us with quite a bit of information that we can provide for our claim rule. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come down to our Active Directory Federation Services Manager tool. We've come to Trust Relationships, Relying Party Trust, and in an earlier demo I created a Relying Party Trust. And what we want to do here is just edit our claim rules. So what we're going to do here is we're just actually going to create a rule. So we'll add a rule. And on the rule, what we've got here is we've got various different templates we can utilize. What we're going to do here is we're just going to go for a pass through or fill an incoming claim. And what we want to do now is we just want to set up this claim rule. So we'll select next. It then brings us into a little table. So we'll start filling out the table. We're going to call this one send group name rule on our little drop down here. What we're going to specify is we're just going to specify group. And then we're going to specify finish. Now we've done that, we'll just go to our issuance authorization rules. And what we want to do here is we just want to remove the permit access to all users. So we'll just remove this rule. Let's say yes to this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a rule. We're going to permit or deny users based on incoming claim. So we'll select next. And then what we need to do is fill out our table. We're going to call this permit production group rule and in our incoming claim type we'll just click on our little drop down and what we're going to do here is we're just going to specify at this point here that we want to permit access to users with this incoming claim so what we're going to do we're going to go for a group and what we want to do here is specify just the production group so we're going to permit the access to users with this incoming claim and select finish and we'll just quit, create another rule, so we'll click Add Rule again. And what we're going to do at this point here, we're going to permit or deny users based on incoming claim, and select Next. And again, we've got a little table to fill out, so we'll just fill out this table. We're going to allow a.datum users. This time we want to go for a UPN. For our value this time, we're going to go at a datum.com. And again, we're going to permit access to users with this incoming rule. So we'll select finish again. And we now have our two rules in place. Now that's all done. I mean, if we just have a look at this allow it to datum users. So if we just highlight the rule, if we just have a uh, edit the rule at this point here. And what we can do at this point here is we can just view the rule language and we can see exactly how this claim rule is created. So as we can see written text here, so we'll just select OK, we'll select Cancel. We're fairly happy that we've now set the rules up, so we'll select OK. And that's the end of this demonstration of creating claim rules. Thank you.